Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today we will be looking at uh, the galvanic cell. And as we looked at the electrolytic cell in the past, the electrolytic cell we saw converted electrical energy to chemical energy. Now when it comes to the galvanic cell, we see that this is the opposite. Where we have chemicals, we have chemicals, zinc sulfate solution, copper sulfate solution, and we see that the chemicals create a voltage or create electricity and that is the difference between the two cells that we have. <clears throat> so to begin, uh, <clears throat> let's just look at this particular cell that we have in front of us and um, if you look at the cell carefully we we'll see that there's a beaker here that has a, a solution, a zinc sulfate solution, zinc sulfate solution and in the zinc sulfate solution, we got a zinc electrode. And now then on this side here, we've got a copper sulfate solution. Copper sulfate solution, which is the blue color as we can see. And we've got a copper electrode that's placed in the copper half cell. <coughs> Now what happens here, and then in between we see that we have a salt bridge, something that links the two cells. So to explain this now, we will begin at the zinc half cell. This is called a zinc half cell. So here we see we have a zinc electrode in a zinc sulfate solution. And what we see happening here, as you can see in the diagram, you're ending up with Zn2+, plus. there's like a gap here, there's a hole, something that's eating into the electrode. So on this particular electrode we can say the zinc metal becomes zinc ions in solution and they lose two electrons. They give off two electrons and here's the two electrons that are given off. And as we discussed Leo, loss of electrons is oxidation. So at the zinc half cell we see that oxidation takes place. And we also talked about NOx, anode oxidation. So oxidation takes place at the anode. So the zinc half cell is the source of electrons. It's what gives off electrons. So it's the negative electrode. It's the negative pole of the cell that we are making. Now those electrons will move from the zinc half cell to the copper half cell. Now at the copper half cell, we see that reduction takes place. And reduction takes place at the cathode, as we mentioned in the past, red cat. And if we write on the reduction half reaction, we can see that in this, in this particular case, the copper ions are attached to the copper electrode. So we can say Cu2 plus will receive or gain two electrons to become copper solid. And here we see that the gain of electrons takes place and the electrode, uh, what happens in the solution is that the ions become attached to the electrode. So what actually happens is we end up having a deposit of copper on the electrode and we see that the copper electrode gains mass. However, it gains mass, right? But if you look at the zinc electrode, what happens is the zinc metal goes into solution, so it's, so to say, dissolving, so it loses mass, so it loses mass, loss of mass, so it loses mass. So this is what's important, we have to see that the zinc half cell and the copper half cell are opposites. At the zinc half cell, oxidation takes place, there's a loss of electrons, the zinc metal become zinc ions in solution by giving off electrons, it supplies electrons and the zinc um, electrode loses mass. On the other hand, the copper electrode gains mass and the reason that it gains mass is because copper ions in solution become, uh, uh, gain the two electrons which, not the same two electrons, basically the electrons start flowing, gain two electrons that are flowing in this direction, in the clockwise direction and it becomes copper metal. <clears throat> now, as a result, because the uh, negative 
uh, the zinc uh, half cell is a negative electrode, the copper half cell will be the positive electrode. Now we have the salt bridge. Without the salt bridge, what happens is that if you look at it, uh, electrons are going from the zinc half cell to the copper half cell. But we see that the copper 2 plus ions are being attached to the copper electrode. So there's lo uh, the, the concentration of SO4 2 minus ions will be greater than the concentration of Cu2 plus ions. So this solution will have a slightly negative charge. And we know that electrons are also negative. So the negative charge of the electrons and the negative ions in solution will create some type of repulsion. So it's going to block the flow of electrons coming through. So to get rid of that excess negative charge, we have a salt bridge. And in the salt bridge, you put a salt. Maybe it can be KNO3. It can be NaCl, just depending on what solution you have here. You have to be careful with the Cl because if you have a silver half cell, then AgCl creates a precipitate. So KNO3 is the safest option to use. So because we have lots of SO4, 2 minus ions in here, we see that this is K plus and NO3 minus. So the K plus ions will move towards this half cell. On the other hand, if you look at the zinc half cell, there's lots of zinc metal becoming zinc 2 plus ions in solution. So there's lots of positive ions in solution. So this half cell is becoming positive. And if the electrons are negative and the solution is positive, there will be some type of an attraction. So there will be resistance to the flow of electrons. So to eliminate that excess positive charge in this half cell, we get the NO3 minus ions from the salt bridge going this way. And they will attract the Zn2 plus ions and that will neutralize the excess positive charge. So what the salt bridge does is that it maintains electrical neutrality between the two half cells. We looked at the galvanic cell and we've seen that um, the negative cell, the zinc half cell, is negative because it is the source of electrons and the copper half cell is positive because it receives electrons. So if you look at the two half cells, the zinc half cell, we can write down this equation here. Zn becomes Zn2 plus plus two electrons. That's your oxidation half cell. And if you look at the copper half cell, we can write down this equation here, which is copper two plus plus two electrons gives you copper. And taking this further, we can now write down the net ionic reaction. So if you look at this, if you write on the net, net ionic reaction, we can say that as a result here, we end up with copper 2 plus plus Zn. Try and put the uh, arrows below each other as far as possible. will become Zn2 plus plus Cu. And we see that that's so because the electrons cancel each other out. And this is the net ionic reaction that we can get from this particular reaction. Now the next important thing to remember here is that we have to write down the net, um, the, the cell notation for the cell. So we can say in this cell we've got zinc which is a solid and what has happened to the zinc? The zinc which is solid has gone, become zinc ions in solution. So the solid zinc became zinc ions in solution. So it's become zinc 2 plus aqueous. And then we have our salt bridge. And on the other side, we can say copper 2 plus in solution becomes copper. So on this side, we can say the copper 2 plus ions, which are in solution, became copper, which is solid. So that is the cell notation for this particular cell. So what this is a conclusion of the first aspect relating to electrochemical cells. As we saw, this is important. What I suggest you do is you go and now switch off this video and from the start you decide and say I'm going to do this and I'm going to draw a zinc half cell 
and this will be my zinc sulfate solution and this will be a zinc electrode and then you draw your copper half cell copper sulfate solution with a copper electrode and then I must draw the the way in which electrons move and I must place in my salt bridge and I must know why do I have a salt bridge what is the half reaction that takes place here what is the half reaction that takes place here where is the anode where is oxidation taking place where is reduction taking place all this the whole full story with our cell notation and after you do this without looking at any notes we can say safely that I know the basics of the electrochemical cells. Thank you for your time.